Okay, so first you wanna measure out your pieces. So we're gonna do them at four inches, and then five and a half inches, and then another at seven inches. And then we're just gonna cut on all those lines. So for this smaller one, I'm doing a 15 degree angle. So you just want to line it up on here and make sure it's locked in place so it's not going anywhere. And then I make sure my laser's on on here so I can line it up with the corner. And you don't want a sharp point on here because you want it to be, have a flat edge. So I'm just gonna cut. <laughs> flip it over and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and um, just line up my laser with the point right there just hold <laughs> and on these other ones we're going to do a slightly um, different angle we're gonna do 10 and now I'm just gonna give them a real quick sanding just to knock down these little splintery edges um, and just kind of get it a little bit smooth, but not too smooth. Okay, so now that we have our pieces cut um, and sanded, we're going to go ahead and start painting them. So what you want to do first is um, paint them all orange. And the reason why we paint them all orange is because when we go to sand them, to distress them a little bit, that orange is gonna show through and it's gonna give it a little bit more character. So just use a little bit of paint at a time. And I use the Doris brand acrylic paints for my projects and I think it, it does really great. It has really great coverage. Sorry, I had to pause for a second because um, my kids are being super crazy and um, I'm a mom first, mom for near a second. So um, anyway, what you want to do is um, paint all of your, your triangles um, all orange first. And just put a really thin layer on there sure you get the tops of them and then we'll do the bottoms last so I'll move on to the next one and these would be super cute pretty much anywhere with your fall decor you can put them on your kitchen counter or your dining room table your mantle or in your entryway on your entryway table and be super cute so I actually have a spot upstairs um, that yeah, it was I don't know some kind of old crate from Kansas City and it's really cute I love this crate and that's where um, I'm gonna be putting mine along with some other little pieces yeah, that one looks pretty good. And it doesn't have to be painted perfectly, um, just enough to cover it. So you can buy, we have this um, as a craft kit in our Etsy shop. If you just search for Daughter Boutique on Etsy, you will find us, and I'll also leave it in um, in the section below. Um, so if you don't have um, like a saw or you know access to pieces of wood close by or anything, um, you can buy the kit. The kit comes with everything that you need, and the pieces are um, pre-sanded, and um, it comes with brushes and all the paints and the wax and everything that you need to, to make this project happen. If 
be sure to go along the edges because um, sometimes you'll get a like a bead of paint on the edges just from where your brush was. That's pretty dry already. So we're gonna let this dry for a few minutes before we start painting the rest of it. So on a candy corn, it goes yellow, orange, and then white. And we're not gonna tape this off um, because I really like the free-handed approach to it better. Um, but if you wanted to tape it off, you definitely could if you like really straight lines. Um, but we're going for a more rustic, primitive look, so we're not gonna tape them off at all. Just grab another brush and then I like to put a, um, a drop cloth down on my work surface so that I'm not getting paint all over the place. This is really easy. Just You just pick it up, throw it in the washing machine and you're good to go for the next time that you're crafting. All right, so we'll just use a little bit of paint and I'm just going to kind of eyeball the line down here. And then I'm going down with my brush strokes like this. Do this side. And then I'm just gonna try to match up these two lines on this side and this side so that I can have it match the front there. And then paint the bottom. can kind of go in and touch up little areas if you want it a little bit more straight and then we're going to paint a second coat on this after it's dry um, but you want to be sure that it's totally dry first because it's just if it's not it's just going to pick up that paint um, that you just painted on there it's just going to pick it up and um, pull it right off All right, so let's do this one again I'm just going to eyeball it And then you can see I'm kind of taking my brush and going this way just lightly with it just to kind of clean up some of that line. dry so we can paint a second coat on here. Add some more paint. And 
and you can see it got a lot darker. But again, make sure it is completely dry before you put that second coat of paint on there. Um, Cause again, it will pull up that other, that bottom layer of paint if it's not completely dry. And then you just wanna go around the edges again Make sure that you don't have any like big um, marks of paint, like streaks of paint, I mean, blobs. So we're going to wait to paint the second coat on that. I'm just going to turn this around. And so I share my um, paint bottles and paint trays and stuff with my kids, my four daughters. Um, and so they look a little crazy. But these are the best things ever to put your paint in. If you do a lot of painting like I do, um, these are just condiment bottles that I got from the Dollar Tree. They come two to a pack and they work great. So when they have the lids on them, ours broke off um, because I have kids. Uh, and so it gets like really dry in there. But if you have the lids for them, then um, they don't dry out. They, it works really great. So now we're gonna do the same thing with the tip of this and just do a really, really light layer, just like you did with the yellow. And then just be careful you're not touching um, on the wet paint there. if you can hear our fridge right now um, we have a drink fridge downstairs and it just kicked on yeah, way too much paint on there so I'm just gonna lightly take some of that off And then um, the there's like indentations in this because it's real wood. Um, so if you kind of push your brush in to it like that, then you can cover up most of that. Gonna do the same thing with this one. go ahead and paint this with the other coat of yellow so that way it's not a step behind it is dripping 
dry and ready for paint. dry. I'm just going to go ahead and add that second coat of white on here. And that one is done. Well, it's not done, but this one is done being painted um, and it is ready to be distressed now. And we'll do the same thing with this one. candy corns are totally dry um, you can start distressing them so you need a piece of sandpaper um, and a lint free cloth for this and then we are going to use some um, dark antiquing wax and a chip brush so let's go ahead and get to sanding um, so if you have like little spots like this where where you got some other colored paint on to another color it's okay you can just sand that right off and it'll blend right in um, when, when you actually apply the antiquing wax. So what you wanna do is you want to focus on the edges and the corners and then just do kind of a light sanding on the fronts of them. And if you, typically I would use my um, Ryobi hand sander. Um, so if you don't have one of those, then this will work just fine. Like that orange is showing through like onto the white and through the yellow and it's given it just some like extra character on there. And you just want to do it all the way around. sanding sponge that I have um, and I just wrap my piece of sandpaper around it just because it gives me a little more leverage when I go to sand if I'm using um, a piece of sandpaper like this. And then you just want to take your cloth and just wipe all that sawdust off. Okay. So what I like to do is shake this up. And if you've never used antiquing wax before, um, 
just remember a little bit of wax goes a very long way it's really hard to get this off once it gets on there and I just like to tap it out of the lid um, so that there's not just a ton in there and then I use the lid so you just put a little bit on there and then I just usually tap it off a little just to get a little bit and then I like I did with my sandpaper I focus on around the edges and the corners and then I just do kind of a light um, glazing over the fronts wax on so many different projects a ton of the things that um, I make on my for my Etsy shop um, require this wax I love it and then when you do this um, just make sure you don't have very much on your brush at all And then I also go in this direction to get that wood grain. Okay, so you can see the difference is huge on this. Um, if you don't like this look, then that's fine. You don't even have to distress them if you want to. Um, I like this look and so I, I used a lot. Um, but you can just spray these or you can just apply some clear wax over this and it'll be just fine. Gonna do all the sides. I just remember a tiny, tiny bit of wax. You don't want too much on there. But what this does is it gets like way down into those grooves that you didn't totally sand out, and um, it just gives it so much more character. And you can find these chip brushes. You can find them on Amazon, um, or you can find them at any craft store, um, or even Walmart has them. And what I do is they come really long, um, which doesn't give you like a really stiff brush. So what I do is I cut mine down a little bit so that it has like a nice stiff bristle right here. actually doing this and not showing you guys how to do it um, I would actually have this facing towards me and doing it but I want you guys to see what I'm doing so I'm facing it towards you and if you get too much like I got a little bit too much in these little areas um, so I don't add you don't want to add more wax to your brush you just want to just like pull up with your brush and try to like distribute it out a little farther um, or pull down to distribute it down a little farther. Okay. So now I'm going to do the top and the bottom. And this one does have some white spots, but I'm not too worried about that because it's just going to go in my house. And then you just want to do the same thing for this one and the same thing same thing for that one if you want to apply the intaking wax to it so you can see there's a huge difference in them um, and I just really love this look I think it's gorgeous so if you have any questions let me know below um, and I 
I will link to all the products that I used here. And then I will also put a link to our craft kit that we sell on Etsy. Um, if you just want like a no fuss craft kit to do at home. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.